14, the pressure of a sample of gas is measured with an open-ended manometer, partially shown to the right. The liquid in the manometer is mercury. Assuming the atmospheric pressure is 29.92 inches of mercury, determine the pressure of the gas in Tor, Pascal, and Bar. Okay, so in the last question, we, we talked about what happens when the manometer is closed, and now we have a manometer that's open. And it just means that at this end, it's open, and it's interfering with the atmosphere. In this case, the atmospheric pressure is 29 0.92 inches of mercury. So that's Hg, right? So now we have to find out what the pressure of the gas is. Well, there's basically two ways that, you know, a uh, manometer being open is going to affect the gas, right? Let's just maybe make a little nice U, and I'm trying to draw this part, right? So there's when your manometer is open, basically you have two different options. Your gas is either going to be higher on the left-hand side and lower on the right, or your gas is going to be lower on the left-hand side and higher on the right. And this is always the closed end, and this is leading off to the, the gas. What, what, what was that? <laughs> there we go. So G for gas, right? So in our situation, which one are we dealing with here? Yeah, we're dealing with this one, in which the higher end is pointing towards the gas. Now, when that happens, I like to think of it as is that it's going away from the atmosphere, right? You see how it's lower on the side in which it's interfering with the atmosphere. Lower means subtraction. But for this, when you have the higher end interfering with the atmosphere, that's addition. So this case, I like to think of it as subtraction. And this case, if it's closer to the atmosphere, I'd like to think of that as addition. So in our case, that difference, that six inches, the 6.00 inches is going to be subtracted from the atmospheric pressure. So that's the first thing, okay? So pause the video um, if you just want these to draw these drawings, but these have to go away. So bye-bye. But in essence, since the higher part is towards the gas side and not the atmosphere side, it is subtraction. So the first thing that we have to figure out is basically the pressure of the gas would be the pressure of the atmosphere and ATM, I mean atmosphere, minus the height. So we just have to make sure that that is um, the same unit, but it is, right? Inches of mercury, and this is in inches. They told me that the liquid is mercury, so we do have the same unit. So the pressure of the gas for now is 29.92 inches of mercury, minus the height, which was 6.00 inches of mercury, right? Now, we don't really care about the units, but they are the same. So the answer for right now would be in inches of mercury. So the pressure of the gas, as of right now, is 29.92 minus 6. So what is that? 23? 23 23.92. and we have inches of mercury. This is what we have to start from. And now we're going to take this number and convert it into Tor, Pascal, and Bar. So let's go for it. 23.92 inches of mercury. Now we wanna to go to Tor first. So I see on my list of big four that maybe you have to memorize or maybe your teacher or professor will give it to you, but this has a relationship between millimeters of mercury. Tor and millimeters of mercury is basically the same thing. But I first have to go from inches to millimeters. Well, we can go from inches to centimeters first, right? It's just a unit of distance. So 
get those conversion factors out times by the ratio, put down inches on the bottom because you don't want that unit anymore. So that goes on the opposite side. And let's just say we want centimeters. Okay. Well, the general unit, is, you know, the, the general conversion is that one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. Inches cancel out, and now we're left with centimeters of mercury. But we got to get to millimeters. Now remember, there's a, there's a quick conversion, right? Just know that for every one centimeter, that's equal to 10 millimeters. Just remember that, okay? That one's the easy conversion between centimeters and meters. So there's 10 millimeters for every centimeter. So let's use that information times by the ratio. Put centimeters on the bottom. You don't want centimeters anymore. You want millimeters. And for every one centimeter, there's 10 millimeters. And look what's going to happen now. The centimeters will cancel. And if I can, I'm going to extend this a little bit. I'm going to just move this over here because now you see that's the unit. It's millimeters of mercury. And I'm just going to bring this back. Look at that. Now we just have to go to Tor. Well, times by the ratio. Millimeters of mercury goes on the bottom now. Tor goes on the top. But if we notice that 760 Tor equals 760 millimeters of mercury, this is the same number. So it's basically a one-to-one. -one. Tor and millimeters of mercury is the same number. Uh, basically conversion. So just to put the numbers down, it would be 760 for 760, or you could put one to one, but it, it doesn't matter. You won't use this number. Okay. Because 760 divided by 760 is just one. So cancel that out. Boop, boop. And now we're going to come to our first answer of Tor. So 23.92 times 2.54 times 10 and that's it for that one. Uh, we have how many sig figs? We have four sig figs here. So my answer should be in four sig figs. So 607.6. .6. So 607.6 tor. And that is our first answer. Okie dokie. That goes up here. Now let's see. Maybe we could tweak this a little bit to get to our next answer. So we want Pascal. So I look down here. Let's see. Oh, here's Pascal. And oh, there is a relationship between Pascal and millimeters of mercury. We did all of this work to get to millimeters of mercury. So maybe what I can do is I can just get rid of this, right? Get rid of this just to show you that, hey, we're going to start at millimeters of mercury. So I don't want millimeters of mercury. That goes on the bottom. And now I want Pascal. So Pascal goes on the top. And what's the units for Pascal millimeters of mercury? 760 millimeters of mercury equals 101,325 Pascal. So 101,325 on the top. That goes with the Pascal. And the 760 goes on the bottom. Millimeters of mercury cancel out, and now we're left with Pascal. So that's the second answer, but we got to uh, do the math all the way from left to right. So 23.92 times 2.54 times 10 times 101,325, and then divide by 760. We still need four sig figs, so maybe I'll say 8.100. Maybe I'll do this in black to keep with the color. I'll say 8.100 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's Pascal. Okay, answer two done. Look how easy these conversions are. Remember, guys, these are all the same, uh, these are all of the same pressure values, but just different units. Okay, now we need to go to bar. Let's see. I'm scanning down here, and where's bar? Oh, it's right here. Oh, bar has a relationship with Pascal. One bar is 100,000 Pascals. 
And look, we just found out what our Pascal was. So I'm just going to do one more conversion. I could add on times by the ratio. Pascal on the bottom, bar up on top. And for every one bar, right, one bar, there was 100,000 Pascals. That's a lot. Pascal cancels out, and now I just got to do the math again from left to right. So 23.92 times 2.54 times 10 times 101.325. I'm going to divide by 760, and then I'm going to divide again by 100,000. Just want to make sure with all these zeros, that, that's 100,000. And four sig figs, so 0 0.8100. And that's in bar. And I'll just rewrite that at the top here. So this would be 0 0.8100 bar. And now we have all of the answers. What do you think, guys? Just converting between different pressure units, but just memorize these at the bottom, right? Just be able to identify your different pressure units, but that's all that we're doing right now. We're just learning how to convert, okay? So hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all in later lessons. Bye-bye.